should come and tell them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The Liberals are trying to limit this to one hour for the Prime Minister to come in and give a big uh, grand speech uh, and limit the questioning to 11 minutes by Conservative members. Well, the Prime Minister's done his opening statements. You'll see him up here. First, he does them all in English, and now he's doing it all in French. So he blew by. He's about 15, 17 minutes for the English part. Now he's doing it in French. So it looks like he's going to take a 30 minutes filibuster. Anywho, the watch this. to be eight uh, seconds, and I will try and track that uh, on, my, uh, on my iPad here. I may be a little off from time to time. Uh, so if we can, uh, from both sides, so there will be no doubt interruptions on the part of the chair uh, to uh, the witness, uh, yourself, Prime Minister, and probably to members as well to stick to those rules. The first round of questions will be uh, Mr. Polyev, uh, followed by a splitting of time between Mr. Fragascottis and Ms. Katrakis, and then Mr. Fortin and Mr. Angus. Mr. Polyev, six minutes, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Prime Minister. What is the total dollar value of all of the expenses reimbursed, fees paid to, and any other, any other consideration provided by the WE group to you, your mother, your spouse, your brother, and any other member of your family? Just the total, please. Minister. All right, mute. Uh I don't have that exact figure. Uh, that a, reimbursing expenses is something done by an organization, uh, for example. So I don't have uh, those totals. Mr. We... Speaker, uh, point of order. Yeah, what's your Mr. point Chair, of order? Sorry, <laughs> no, Mr. Mm -hmm. Speaker. My point of order is: what's the relevance of these questions of ancillary? Uh, uh, fees paid to family members to the official motion that you I, I don't think that is a, a point of order, uh, Ms. Sirwitz. Uh, back to Mr. Polyev. So you're telling me that you don't know how much immediate fam family members have been paid in expense reimbursements by this organization? Uh, my mother and my brother are professionals in their own right who uh, have uh, engagements uh, and have for many, many years with many different Do organizations you know? across the country. Uh, and I don't have the details of uh, their work uh, work experiences or their expenses. And what about your spouse? What What is the dollar figure? Uh, we, I, I think We Charity has been able to share those dollar figures with you. When was the last time she had an expense reimbursed by We Charity? Uh, I believe it would have been for the trip to uh, to London, where she spoke at WE. Uh, but those expenses how, were cleared in advance right. by the Ethics Commission. And how much? Back, how much was it? Mr. How much were those expenses? Uh, I don't have that number in front of me. Mr. Prime Minister, it's very hard to believe you don't have that number. You've been uh, embroiled in this scandal now for over a month, and these kinds of questions have been asked uh, repeatedly. I asked it to you in the House of Commons weeks ago. You've had time to get it, so I'll ask again. How much was your spouse reimbursed by WE for her recent trip to London? Okay, uh, to take an example, uh, for a plane ticket uh, that was booked for her flight to London, it wasn't something that she would have paid for to be reimbursed by uh, what about the a hotel? charity. The WE charity yeah. would have uh, actually uh, bought uh, paid for that ticket themselves. So we right. wouldn't have those answers on our credit cards, for example. So you don't have any idea how much the WE Charity paid for your spouse to travel to London? Um, over the past number of months, I've been involved in serving how Canadians much? and focused on that. But I know that the WE Charity themselves have shared those expenses. Back, and they have had, not. Uh, Polly, yeah, actually, the they, have not. To them. they have not shared those expenses, Prime Minister. They have refused to tell us the itemized expense for that trip, and they didn't even confirm she was on that trip. Uh, what hotel did they pay for her to stay at? Uh, I don't know. Okay. This would have been a very expensive trip, and it would have been paid for in March. Your government then, a month later, was amassing a program of a half a billion dollars, which you now admit you helped approve a month after that. How could you possibly have believed that it was appropriate for you to approve a nearly half billion dollar grant to a group that only 60 days earlier was paying for sumptuous travels for uh, immediate members of your family. The Mr. Ethics, Prime Minister. 
the ethics commissioner uh, fully cleared Sophie's volunteer unpaid work uh, with WE, uh, whether it's for her podcast or her appearance at WE events or her work as a WE ambassador and ally. It was all entirely unpaid, but they reimbursed expenses. And that was clearance that was gotten in advance by the ethics commissioner. And so did you tell the ethics commissioner? Mr. Mr. Polyev, uh, we're on equal time here and the prime minister still has time. Go ahead, uh, prime minister. Was, so obviously that was uh, not a concern for me, knowing that the ethics commissioner had uh, had approved of Sophie volunteering her time and having expenses covered uh, for engagements with this. Uh, and when you became Mr. In, when you came involved, became involved with the decision to approve the half billion dollar grant to We Charity on uh, May the fifth, did you then immediately inform the ethics commissioner uh, that uh, you were doing that? and remind uh, and also inform the ethics commissioner that this group was paying expenses for your spouse? Uh, as, as I said, the ethics commissioner already knew uh, because he had approved uh, Sophie uh, volunteering with the WE organization uh, a, a long time ago. And secondly, uh, the, uh, uh, my knowledge of WE being involved in delivering this program only happened on May 8th, not on May 5th, as you are saying. On May 8th, did you contact the ethics commissioner to seek permission to be part of the decision to approve this half billion dollar grant? Yes or no? On, uh, on May 8th, I received the uh, formal recommendation by the public did service you, that they go ahead the, uh, with the WE ever. program, that they go ahead with the WE program uh, to deliver it. And I pulled it back from cabinet and asked them to do further due diligence because back. I knew there would be questions. I'm, I'm sorry, Prime Minister, back to Mr. Baliev. Time remaining. Uh, you have about uh, 68 seconds. <laughs> uh, Mr. Prime Minister, you admit now that you should have uh, uh, removed yourself from the decision to grant this half billion dollar grant uh, to the WE Charity. You were found guilty of taking a free vacation from someone who sought a $15 million grant from you, strike one. You were found guilty of interfering with the criminal prosecution of a liberal link corporation. Chair, two. point of order. Uh, what's your point of order, Mr. Sabera? Uh, the MP Polyeva brought has brought up some points that are not of relevance to uh, this committee and the motion put forth. I uh, I am going to allow the uh, going to allow the uh, the question, but uh, Mr. Polyev, please leave time for the answer in your six minutes as well. Go ahead. Thank you. You, you were twice found guilty of breaking the Ethics Act before, uh, strikes one and two. And now you admit a third strike by your failure to break to recuse yourself. Uh, and in the process, you broke the Ethics Act a third time. What happens in baseball when you have three strikes? Uh, that's the end of the uh, year round, Mr. Polyev. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, you have about 30 seconds to respond. As I said uh, to Canadians a number of weeks ago, uh, I should have recused myself knowing uh, the connections between my family and the perceptions around this issue. However, uh, I did not uh, intervene to make sure make this recommendation happen. Uh, when the recommendation came forward from the public service, I sent it back to the public service to say, you really need to make sure that this is uh, indeed, the only organization that can deliver this program and that this is done exactly the right way, uh, because there is going to be careful scrutiny on this. Uh, at that point, instead, I should have recused myself, but I didn't. I decided to push back instead, and that I regret because uh, young people aren't having the opportunities they would have had this summer through that program, even though there's many other things we're doing for young That's people this summer. Over for your opening remarks, Prime Minister, and I believe... Uh, we'll try and hold you to uh, 10 minutes and then we'll go to questions. So uh, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Chair. Ce printemps. In spring, Canadians were plunged into the deepest crisis of our generation. Still today, people are falling ill and too many of us are still dying from COVID-19. Families are still grieving. They're losing their jobs and they're going through very tough times. Our government had to take action. Our country is facing a contagious and deadly virus and everyone's behavior and choices 
allows us to protect everyone's health. All Canadians had to take measures to limit the spread of this virus, and we had to make important sacrifices. People had to be able to count on their government. We couldn't ask people to stay home and to not go to work without giving them confidence that we would help them to pay their rent, their mortgage, or their groceries. We knew that it would be better to take action quickly and decisively than we would make errors along the way. If we acted slowly, trying to avoid errors, it would have been worse than doing nothing at all. With this pandemic and this economic crisis, our government had to show creativity and flexibility. We couldn't hesitate or be limited by current ways of doing things. Obviously, this pandemic is not over, but the actions taken by our government to help protect Canadians are still in place. Throughout this crisis, Canadians have been extraordinary. Canada is resuming its economy and our economy is recovering. And we've seen the beginning of what could be a second wave, however. Earlier this week, we said that we have to remain vigilant. This pandemic presents several challenges for students. Minister Chegger discussed these challenges and what our government did to remedy these issues with the committee. We put forward a $9 billion plan to help students get through this difficult time. We imposed a moratorium on the refunding of student loans, increased the number of student summer jobs, and introduced a CERB for students, giving students $1,500 per month. The Canadian Student Service Grant was also part of this plan. When we created the program, we had three objectives in mind. First, we wanted to encourage students to get involved in their communities during this crisis. Second, we wanted to help not-for-profit organizations to fulfill their missions and to support Canadians in difficulty. And third, we wanted to help students who volunteer to receive financial competition, uh, compensation in, as recognition for their service. At the outset, we knew that time was of the essence. After all, even Mr. the Chair, best I have program a point of order. imaginable. Mr. Chair, point of order. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Uh, what's your uh, point of order, Mr. Morant? Um, I just want to clarify, uh, as per your ruling on Tuesday, July 28th, when you said if it was politicians, we'd get into the four second, four second. I just want you to confirm for this around that there will be strict adherence to the practice of equal time for questions and answers. I don't think it's a, uh, 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 it, I will allow it as a point of order. I will explain that when we start uh, questioning uh, Mr. Morantz and uh, the answer to it is really, really yes. But I will okay. explain to the witness why we're under COVID-19 rules, basically. Uh, Mr. Okay. Prime Minister. From the outset, we knew that time was of the essence. After all, even the best program imaginable wouldn't make any difference if it couldn't be delivered this summer. So we had to quickly connect the thousands of students who wanted to volunteer with the many community organizations that needed an extra hand because of the pandemic. At first, we'd hoped to use the Canada Service Corps. The Canada Service Corps was created in 2018 to encourage young people to serve and connect them to opportunities in communities across the country. By developing networks, creating partnerships with existing organizations and offering micro grants, the plan had always been to scale up the program over the coming years to ensure many thousands of young people could serve their communities and their country every year. When the Canada Student Service Grant was initially conceived, I expected that the Canada Service Corps would help deliver the program. The Service Corps is an important and long-standing part of our national youth strategy and I knew that making it responsible for the CSSG would accelerate its development. Ultimately, however, the public service concluded that delivering the CSSG required a third party partner external to government and that we charity should act as that service provider. I first learned that we charity was being proposed to deliver the program on May 8th when the CSSG was to go before full cabinet. Until that date, I had not spoken at all with my staff about We Charity 
in relation to the CSSG. In fact, as of May 8th, my expectation was still that a supercharged version of the Canada Service Corps would likely deliver the program. From my perspective, we charity hadn't come up. As you know, by May 8th, the public service had already concluded that we charity was the best option to deliver this program. They had formally recommended it. The CSSG, including the recommendation that we charity be used, had already gone through the COVID committee of cabinet on May 5th. I was not involved in either of those steps. On May 8th, I received a briefing before the cabinet meeting and learned for the first time that we charity had been recommended as a partner and was on the cabinet agenda. I asked why the plan didn't involve the Canada Service Corps. We were told that the Canada Service Corps wouldn't be able to scale up to deliver the program in time. This was disappointing, but ultimately not surprising to me, given my understanding of the state of the Canada Service Corps development and other demands facing the public service at the time. Of course, policy staff in my office had been working with the Privy Council office and other departments. They knew that We Charity was under consideration. However, I never spoke with my staff about We Charity or its proposed involvement in administering this program until May 8th. I also never spoke to Craig or Mark Kielberger or anyone at We Charity about the CSSG. I did not speak to either of them at all during this period. As it became apparent to me, my chief of staff, Katie Telford, also didn't know until the briefing on May 8th that We Charity was being proposed. So my chief of staff and I were finding out about this important part of the proposal only hours before the cabinet meeting. Even given the rapid pace of work during the crisis, this was not the way things were supposed to go. We learned that there had been tough questions asked about the CSSG proposal and We Charity during the COVID committee a few days earlier. We both felt that we needed more time before this item was presented to cabinet time to consider and understand the reasons behind the proposal that we charity deliver the program. On that issue, we had several questions that we wanted answered, particularly given my specific expertise in youth issues. During the pandemic, government was working very hard and very quickly. We still are. It was not uncommon for me to be briefed on something relatively close in time to the cabinet meeting. Here, however, given the scale of the program, the questions that had been raised and my own commitment to youth issues, we needed more time. As well, we both knew that We Charity was known to be connected to people in our government, including myself, as I'd spoken at their events in the past. So we knew that the selection of We Charity would be closely scrutinized. We wanted to make sure that the process and decision were the best possible in the circumstances. So I decided to pull the CSSG proposal from the cabinet agenda for May 8th so that further work could be done. This wasn't an easy decision. We knew the urgency. By the end of April, many university students had finished their exams. We were already a week into May, but we pulled the item from the agenda so that we could be confident that we were doing the right thing the right way. My primary concern was to make sure that the public service could fully support its recommendation that without a doubt, We Charity was the right and indeed the only partner to deliver the program. I was briefed again on May 21st and the public service told me that they had done the due diligence we'd asked for and that they were confident in the recommendation. In effect, they said that if we wanted this program to happen, it could only be with We Charity. The choice was not between providers, it was between going ahead with We Charity to deliver the program or not going ahead with the program at all. Given the public service advice, I was comfortable that the CSSG could now be presented to cabinet. On May 22nd, Minister Chagger presented the program to cabinet and cabinet approved it. After cabinet approved the CSSG, the next step was to approve its funding. Here, the briefing note from policy staff in my office recommended imposing an additional oversight measure in the dispersal of the approved funding. I agreed with that recommendation and directed that before additional tranches of funding were released, Minister Chagger would have to write to the President of the Treasury Board 
to provide an update on the CSSG. When cabinet approved the CSSG, obviously I knew that I had spoken at various WE charity events. I'd never been paid to do so. I was also aware that my wife had an unpaid role as a WE charity ambassador and ally. I knew she appeared at WE charity events and that when she traveled to get to an event, WE charity covered her related expenses. I also knew that Sophie had recently launched a podcast on mental wellness in conjunction with WE Charity. The Ethics Commissioner had approved this role, including WE Charity covering her expenses. I also knew that my brother and mother had worked with WE Charity as well with other, as with other organizations. However, I did not know how much work either of them had done with WE Charity or how much they'd been paid. These were things that I would only learn after the program launched publicly. That said, sometimes recusing oneself can be the right thing to do, even if it's not required. Here, my mother's connection to WE Charity and the other connections in my family could lead some people to wonder whether those connections had played some role in the decision to select WE Charity. That, of course, was not the case. WE Charity received no preferential treatment not from me, not from anyone else. The public service recommended WE Charity, and I did absolutely nothing to influence that recommendation. I didn't even know it had been made until May 8th. And when I learned that WE Charity was recommended, I pushed back. I wanted to be satisfied that the proposal that WE Charity deliver the CSSG had been properly scrutinized. Uh, I think they're going to have to call him back. The liberals are filibustering. Trudeau is filibustering. He did 20 minutes on a 10-minute speech. Um, it's Leave your comments below. More to follow. Have a good day.